Have you ever wondered what would happen to Zambian state-owned assets if we failed to pay China the money that we owe them? In today's episode, we are going to be talking about a lot of things and uh, I really want to focus on a few uh, important topics because we have to discuss this as a nation. There are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by the sword and the other is by debt. So this is very profound. And very interesting due to the fact that nowadays countries are not really using brutal force to take over a nation they are doing it in a subtle and effective way by using debt so this is one of the reasons why we Zambians need to be very careful and we have to understand how the game is played because the game has really changed so a lot of you are seeing uh, you know the heading and uh, one of the reasons why I'm saying during the past 11 years, right, Zambia has obviously retrogressed by a whole lot. Let me take you back to 2015, right, uh, or, or rather 2005, 2005, Zambia completed its hippie, right, uh, you know, highly indebted poor countries and uh, as a nation, we vowed never, ever, ever to fall back into debt. But a few years down the line, we again managed to find us uh, our, ourselves in this particular problem of having unsustainable debt. Now, today we are going to be looking at a very important uh, review or rather report, which is coming from uh, the China Africa Research Initiative. And this basically just uh, sort of uh, explains the amount of uh, debt that a lot of different African countries have. And uh, there are a lot of uh, important uh, points that we can get to learn from and uh, we can just basically get to scrutinize. So without further ado, let's look at this particular report because I really want you to get this. So according to this information, right, in November 2020, Zambia became the first African country to default on its euro bonds during the COVID-19 pandemic, bringing the country's debt distress into headlines around the world. Bondholders' refusal to provide debt suspension rested largely on fears that Zambia was not disclosing significant liabilities to Chinese creditors. Uh, and if we had to take a look at these uh, statistics right over here, right? For example... 18 major and minor Chinese financiers have provided external loans to Zambia and its state-owned enterprises since 2000. Loan commitments by Chinese financiers between 2000 and 2020 totaled uh, 10.3 billion US dollars with 63%, which is 6.47 billion, committed just since 2015. So basically what this is uh, saying is uh, we accumulated 63% of our current debt since 2015. And if you go back, right, uh, 2015, we were obviously being led by the patriotic front. And you already know what was happening ever since 2015 uh, up to date. So based on the project implementation status, we estimate that $7.8 billion was dispersed by August 2021. Contracted but undispersed uh, Chinese loans as of August 2021 amounted to 2.5 billion US dollars, around 13% of 2020 GDP. We calculate that Zambia and its state-owned enterprises have repaid at least 1.2 billion to Chinese lenders since 2000s. Excluding Kathira Gorge lower, Zesco's debt to all creditors is closer to 930 million than the 527 million being reported by the Zambia's uh, Ministry of Finance. So basically, we have a lot of trouble and we have a lot of debt with regards, uh, you know, to how much money we are owing China. But the most important thing that we have to learn from this particular, uh, you know, predicament is... Uh, what is at stake and uh, let's say for example we failed we entirely failed uh, to pay back our loans right because this is a probability because at this particular moment right the world is gravitating towards having a recession a financial or rather economic recession is not really far away it is literally around the corner 
it could happen in the next one or two years and if we have an economic recession right obviously the odds of zambia so of uh, defaulting on its loans is going to be very high so what is going to happen uh if zambia fails to sort of uh, maintain or rather sustain its debt especially to china because we are owing china a whole lot of money so this is the tricky part because if you take a look at uh a lot of our state-owned assets uh such as uh zesco and uh for example some of our airports or let me just be specific the kk international airport right obviously uh getting to build the uh airport we sort of uh borrowed some money and uh we had some sort of uh stipulated conditions in order for us to sort of uh, keep that particular uh, asset so what happens if we fail to you know sustain or rather repay back the loans or rather if we default on making those loans so these are the questions that we are supposed to be asking and it is very important for us to understand the implications because just like i told you right things have changed and just like this saying goes right there are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation one is by the sword and the other is by debt so if you take a look at what has been happening right these people are very smart they are very intelligent and they know they do understand our weaknesses they understand what we can do and what we cannot do so when they are giving us these loans right or rather when they are approving to give us these loans they are very very strategic with what they give us the loans for because if you take a look at you know certain state-owned assets right they are very strategic you know so if we get to default on these loans obviously we are going to be losing more and uh, this is one of the reasons why eventually what's going to happen is if we are not going to be careful we are going to discover that we are literally just uh the natives of zambia we are the owners of zambia but we do not really have any control so this is one of the reasons why we need to understand uh, and study power and influence because at this particular moment right we are not really playing the game and the game is really dribbling us because we do not really understand how to do these things but of course at this particular moment right the most important uh, question that we really need uh, to come to answer is how are we going to be able to rejuvenate ourselves and just basically get to turn this whole situation around and obviously we have uh, we have witnessed a lot of uh, situations where for example there was uh some noise way back when uh, kenya or rather some some country uh had to re relinquish its rights to one of the the seaports you know or rather the ocean ports so some strategic location of the country so these people are literally uh playing the game to uh win and uh, to cripple us without even knowing because a lot of people expect you know in order for another country to take over uh, a country right they need to to use force they, they need to like use weapons but nowadays everything is slowly slowly happening you know behind closed doors and we can't even really get to notice what is happening so this is one of the reasons why we have to be extremely extremely careful and one of the most you know surprising thing is in 2000 and, uh, 2005, hippie completion point, uh, we sort of uh, cleared most of the debts and all that stuff. But a few years, 10 years later, we're back in the same situation. So my question is, are we learning from our past mistakes? Are we becoming, you know, smarter or basically we are just getting to repeat the same mistakes over and over and over again and if you take a look at uh you know these assets that are being uh sort of uh controlled uh these are very important strategic uh assets like for example zesco you know that zesco really plays a key role with regards to the economy because if zesco is sabotaged right and uh for some reason we sort of lose total control over zesco do you know how devastating or how easy our economy can be manipulated let's say for example at this particular moment right 
uh everybody has been wondering why the hell does zambia always have load shedding am i light nishi yela dionzi why are we not able to have consistent flow of electricity why do we fail to solve the electricity deficiency problem even after a lot of years you know we've been having electricity problems since the past 20 years okay zambia has abundant water and we are capable of basically providing electricity to the 18 million uh zambians but there's going to be economics uh sabotage if we so of all a lot of money and uh, due to the fact that electricity plays a key role with regards to growing the economy right it's very easy to manipulate and have our economy sort of uh, uh strangled if i can put it that way so this is one of the reasons why we need to elect leaders who are not really going to be accumulating a lot of debt and they are just basically going to be sort of uh uh you know doing things that are really going to cripple us in the long run yes buildings were built infrastructure was built road networks were also created but if you look at the you know pros and the cons in the long run because these things are going to be needed to be maintained if you look at the you know the benefit in the long run right is it worth it if you know what i mean so this is one of the reasons why we should also have uh, a system especially in the constitution we are supposed to be able to vote for or against acquisition of loans you know the leaders need to come back to the people to the zambian people and ask us whether we should be able to get a lot of different loans because by the end of it all right all these loan acquisitions were probably done behind zambia's backs you know the zambian people's backs and we didn't even know that we were acquiring this and that amount of debt because nobody consulted us so this is one of the reasons why in the constitution of zambia especially due to the fact that we have experienced this problem for the past i don't know we've we've experienced this problem uh in the past and we are in the same predicament in the same bad situation again but going on uh you know we're supposed to have uh some sort of uh, voting mo mechanism where the people of zambia are consulted because by the end of it all zambians are the ones that really get to be affected when uh we've got unsustainable loans this is one of the reasons why you are beginning to pay a lot of taxes there's boho tax there's you know sunda tax there's the ukuryamo tax and people are really paying uh heavy taxations or rather they are being affected by heavy taxations because somehow the government needs to accumulate and get the money that they need to sort of uh, you know be able to pay for these loans so this is one of the reasons why we are supposed to be very vocal and we're supposed to make sure that zambians get to vote for or against more loan acquisition so this is one of the reasons why i keep on saying uh, the patriotic front was or rather is one of the worst things that ever happened to Zambia in the recent past like honestly if you take a look at the statistics if you take a look at what has been happening and all the innuendos that were transpiring during the past 11 years we obviously de or rather retrogressed 